I would say an oscilloscope is really nothing more than a voltmeter. In fact, I rigged another little gadget up here so you can better understand how this works. I'm going to hook this battery here on these two terminals that are attached to this oscilloscope. You notice it pushes the line, every time I hook it up, pushes the line down. Pushes it down. And at the same time, you look at the meter here, pushes the meter to the side there. Now I'm going to turn the battery around. Now it pushes the line up and it pulls the meter to the other side. Now I turn it around again, it pushes the line down, pushes the meter to the other side. If I was to keep switching this back and forth real fast like this, well I can't do it that fast by hand, but you get the idea. If I was to keep switching it, that would be called alternating current alternating current. And if I just leave it hooked up in one direction like this, or like this, if I'm just leaving it, the needle's pulled to this side, the line's pushed up. If I just leave it like that, what's going into that meter and my oscilloscope is direct current. Even if I switch it around, now it's pulling it to the other side and it's pushing the line down, that's still direct current. It's alternating current when the polarity out of the battery changes back and forth. In other words, back and forth, back and forth like this. I hope that makes it simple because alternating current is not really a hard concept. It is if you read it out of a textbook and you try to understand what alternating current is, but there's nothing complicated about it. Just simply a matter of a current that changes back and forth. Now I'm going to help you better understand how alternating current is produced. A lot of people have a hard time understanding the difference between alternating current and direct current. So I threw together something here that I think will make it real simple without even having to use a whole lot of words. What I've got here is a magnet, and when it spins like this, it generates current in that coil. Behind the coil, you'll see that it's hooked to my oscilloscope. When I spin the magnet, you can see it producing a sine wave. And if you look here, you see the needle swinging back and forth as the magnet spins. So does it affect the oscilloscope and the meter. Now, it's probably confusing at this point. You don't know what you're looking at, but I'm going to add more to it, and it's going to make more sense. Okay, this time I rigged this up a little bit different. I put a diode between the coil and my oscilloscope and this meter, so now when the magnet swings, guess what? It can only swing in one direction. So I turned my alternating current that was coming out of this, this coil, I turned it into direct current. You notice it only moves down. Now if I turn the diode around, guess what will happen? It will move from the center line on the oscilloscope up. And again on the meter here, you're going to see the meter switch directions. Let me uh, pause this for a second. Okay, I turned the diode around. So now when it generates current, it's still DC but it's going in the opposite direction. If you need, notice my meter goes in the opposite direction. If you're not getting this stuff right away, don't worry about it. You just keep playing with it and all of a sudden it starts to make sense. If we look one more time here, you can see the uh, magnet spinning in front of this coil. And then you look at the meter and you can see the line moving up and down depending on which direction the voltage rises or falls. Now I can change the speed of this line here so it'll it'll appear more like a sine wave depending depending on how fast I spin the magnet determines how fast I have to spin this dot here. I can spread it out like this or I can make it to where the dot barely moves at all then you just see the line moving up and down. I can also hook a microphone to this oscilloscope and you can look at my voice wave fluctuations. Using the same oscilloscope, I hooked it to a speaker, so every time my uh, voice vibrates the speaker paper, it uh, moves the coil next to the magnet, you can see the, the frequencies change. Watch. Here's another little demonstration to help bring some of these concepts home. Here I've got a coil sitting here that I'm going to hook to this battery. I've got a north 
pole on this side and I've got a south pole on this side. Watch what ha happens when I hook it up. It, well, it shouldn't be spinning. There we go. It pulls the south side toward. Now, if I reverse polarity on the battery, you notice the north and south keep changing. Maybe that helps you better understand why the meter the other. pulls in one direction or why the line moves up or down on the oscilloscope. I'm just reversing polarity. Just a little bit more about diodes. Picture this. I hook this battery up. Let's say this is a real circuit and these are wires. Current will only flow into this diode in one direction. If I turn the battery around in this direction, current can't flow, but it can flow in this direction. Same with the circuit here. Only one of these lights is capable of coming on in this circuit. Remember the uh, positive going uh, voltage can move in this direction. But if it's negative, if it were positive, I'm sorry, positive can't go against the arrow. It can only move in this direction. So only one of those lights can come on. You should be able to look at this. Electronics is a common circuit that we often have to troubleshoot. They contain devices that are called bridge rectifiers. This is what they actually look like. And the uh, board is like this. You've got the AC coming in, plus and minus, and by the time it goes through here, it gets filtered out. Only the negative can come through. And looking at this side, only the positive can come through here. 